Two Canadian patients with spinal cord injuries have received Neuralink brain implants that allow them to control a computer with their thoughts. Both are men around 30 years old. They have limited or no ability to use their hands. They're part of the first clinical trial outside of the United States testing Elon Musk's wireless brain chip. Neuralink was first introduced in 2020 and implanted in a paralyzed American in 2024. The Canadian patients will be monitored for at least a year with the potential for more additional patients to be added. Both men will be monitored for safety and whether the chip adds value to their quality of life. In the coming weeks and months, they'll learn to type on a computer without touching a keyboard. Dr. Andres Lozano is the lead surgeon behind the trial, and he is in our Toronto newsroom. Uh, Dr. Lozano, this sounds equal parts amazing and, uh, and significant. Uh, put this, this breakthrough into perspective for us. Well, it's uh, really giving us uh, unique access to the brain and in patients who have a severe neurologic problem like being paralyzed as a consequence of spinal cord injury, it has the potential of uh, being able to increase their function. They can move by just thinking, they can move cursors, they can really um, increase their level of function. So it's a very exciting development. And how are the patients doing? So our first two patients are doing fantastic. Uh, the surgeries are taking about four hours to do um, and uh, the patients are leaving the following day. And right away, as soon as we implant the electrodes, uh, the, the electrodes can record from the neurons and as the patients think, uh, of course, the neurons change their activity. This activity is captured, that's read, if you like, by, by these electrodes. Or, uh, by the way, there's 1,028 of these electrode contacts that we implant in the brain with a very specialized robot. The activity of the neurons as they speak uh, is captured. Uh, it is sent through the skin, through Bluetooth, to a receiver using artificial intelligence that can be decoded or translated into actions, into movements. And our first objective is to have the patients use a cursor on a computer uh, and just merely by thinking about moving the cursor, they're able to do it uh, just by thinking, so without using their hands. So it's really a remarkable achievement. Yeah, I mean, you know, you describe it so clearly and so matter-of-factly, uh, I don't know, like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, if someone had described that to you, would you have thought it possible? We, we knew it was gonna happen. Uh, what the big advantage now is, is just the technological breakthroughs in terms of being able to very precisely implant 1,028 electrode contacts in the brain, being able to implant it directly in the area, anywhere in the brain, but in this case, in the area that controls the hand, being able to uh, transmit these signals wirelessly so the patients can leave their home, they can go outside, they can use this anywhere. So this is really the breakthrough, it's a technological breakthrough that has made it possible. Uh, unfair question, I know, because I'm sure this is very complex and you know we have limited time and you did do such a, a good job of explaining kind of the general parts to me, but I'm still having a hard time getting my mind around the way that a person can think and the Neuralink can then somehow transmit that into action? Like, is there a simple way to explain that connection? Well, when, when you're thinking of moving your hand to the right, for example, the neurons in your brain exert a command. They fire in synchrony, and they tell the muscles in your body to move. When you're thinking of moving to the left, it's a different group of neurons. They're within a millimeter or two, but they're different. So we can now listen to which neurons are speaking and what they're saying. We can decode this information and we can then translate it into an actual movement. That's extraordinary, uh, but again, very, very clearly explained. Uh, Neuralink reached out to you and your team, as I understand it, to perform the Canadian clinical trials. What was it like to get that call? Well, uh, we, we, were, we jumped at the opportunity. We were very excited to get that call. We, uh, you know, we think this is the frontier. Uh, we think that we're, this is where we want to go. We are very proud that Canada is chosen uh, to lead uh, outside of the U.S. Uh, we have been doing implants in the brain for other disorders like Parkinson's disease and depression for many years. And really, uh, because of our expertise, because of the, the caliber of our nurses and doctors, at, uh, at our hospital, uh, they chose us to uh, carry this project forward. So very early days, I know, uh, but uh, maybe finish with this. Tell us a little bit more about what you see the future looking like given Neuralink. 
So we've been emphasizing recording brain signals and translating them into actions, but we can also write into the brain. We can put in new information in the brain. So if you are, for example, you're blind because you have disease of your eyes or optic nerves, it is possible we envisage to be able to use visual information, for example, wear a video camera on your, in your glasses and then have, have wireless transmission of that visual information directly into the visual cortex, the part of the brain that's responsible for vision. In this way, we could bypass any illness or blockage and restore vision. Similarly, we think that we will be able to restore speech in people that have lost the ability to speak by either recording from the neurons that generate speech and uh, giving a new voice to patients. So we're very excited to be able to do things like th in the future to restore vision, to restore speech, and restore movements to people that have lost this capacity as a consequence of disease or injury. This is very impressive, and, and I find it very uplifting to hear your description of it. Dr. Lozano, thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Andres Lozano is the lead neurosurgeon behind the Canadian Neuralink trials and the Allen and Susan Hudson Cornerstone Chair in Neurosurgery at Toronto's University Health Network.